Oh, that. Oh, but do we do this on the phone? Right? Yeah, look. Yeah, but where do the questions appear? Uh, I guess here. Facebook to the man. Where did you. Maybe I'm going to get to mentions. I'm, like a lot of it. No one's explained anything. Do we need Facebook over? I don't even think I've got Facebook. <laughs> Line, right? TV line. Oh, we're on. Oh. I'm looking at you right now. Hold on. It's trying to attach to some Wi Fi signal. You guys are on, yeah. I don't think I'm on. Sorry. Okay. Alright. Oh my goodness. People are right. So. I'm. I'm. My. I have no idea. What's this is good. No, this is good. This is our brave new world, right? Um. <laughs> so we're here with Ben and Alfonso from The Exorcist. Yay! Yay! Hey, hello. Um. They just came off of Comic Con in New York City, which um, um is. Insane, and did you guys meet a lot of fans? Did you see cosplay? Like, what is we didn't. They actually, kind of keep us away from. Actually, our, our experience in Comic Con, both San Diego and New York, mm -hmm. it's just uh, at the back, like running through tunnels, <laughs> going yeah, through You're cars. kind of guarded, and you, they never let you out onto the floor, which is where the real booty lies, yeah, right? You know, that. I wanted to look around and I, buy some design vibes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was wondering what even what exercise cosplay would even look like. I mean, this season especially, you guys are just like chilling in like leather and jeans, right? I mean, like it's not, it's not, anyway, I guess maybe you could be like vomiting pea soup all over the place. But, um, um, so we've already got a bunch of questions. Um, let's see. Oh, Alfonso Herrera is joining. That's awesome. You're in, you're in, you're both joining our Facebook Live and you are. Uh, actually, I, w I just published this on, fantastic. on Facebook. So maybe that's why. Yeah. That's fantastic. We like that. I'm here. Um, so Tasha Louise Dean just said, really looking forward to second season. It looks so scary. I would like to talk to you guys a little bit about Friday's episode. We saw the um, Marcus and Tomas storyline kind of starting to move toward the Seattle storyline. Yeah. What can you tell us about? Um, your, I, obviously, you're not going to tell us exactly when that happens, but talk to me a little bit about how those storylines start to move toward each other. Maybe in this episode coming up. Um, well, the episode coming up. Is uh, it's like an exorcism that's never been seen on TV or in movies before. Really, it's completely unique and brilliantly directed by horror maestro Ty West, who directed a movie called House of the Devil and The Innkeepers. Mm -hmm. He's a fantastic director, mm -hmm. and um, there's a brilliant young actress in it called Beatrice, who's um, how old is she? 12? 12, 13. Like She's absolutely phenomenal. She's brilliant. brilliant. I mean, completely brilliant. And um, so we're kind of moving towards that island, but I can't, we, we're going, not allowed to say how we're going, going inside. It's like we're going little by little, like yeah. for some kind, of some reason, like destiny is pulling both characters into that direction. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but it's going to be very interesting because both Marcus' approach towards how to solve an exorcism mm -hmm. and Tomas' approach, which is, uh, an approach of a rookie mm -hmm. uh, is going to be very clear on that uh, on that episode, and that friction is going to be also present there. Which yeah, is you see a lot of friction about that in yeah. this episode coming up. Oh my goodness! But then we'll continue throughout the entire season. Yeah, okay. it's not like you guys make up in episode four or something, and it's all. Well, happy. it sort of goes in and out. It goes in and out. Yeah. Although we haven't seen beyond episode eight, have we? So yeah. we don't know. <laughs> that friction is there, but it's not. It's very subtle, and it comes and goes like okay. real life. It's like uh, it's there. It's present. It's like uh, workplace issues. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, you mentioned that you had a twelve-year-old um, co-star in this episode. Yeah. 
Every time I watch a horror movie or a scary show on television that involves a child, I'm like, does this child actually get what's going on? Are we scarring this person she, for life? They love they it. Love they do. Love they love it. They, love they have come a in and they fun. get boils and teeth <laughs> and they fly and they absolutely love it. Yeah. Yeah. And she, but she's also a phenomenal actor. Yeah. I mean, she's okay. absolutely inside even in rehearsals she right. was like going for it 100 oh percent like just save it because yeah. we're gonna be here and besides sometimes uh for example in the case of uh of children i remember on set they were uh rigging one of them and they were so excited because they were going to fly and oh, uh, yeah actually they it's like a playground for them we're the same though. we're like we're gonna fly a little <laughs> bit more <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, I was gonna say that would be really fun for me. Too. Yeah, I don't, that's yeah. pretty, that's pretty awesome. Rosanna is saying Hola de Madrid, cuando es la segunda temporada? Eh, la segunda temporada ya está en España, en HBO, en HBO Spain. You can watch it in Spain, so. Awesome, that, that's an answer for you, Rosanna. Um, let's see what else we got here. Both first and second season. Um, there's just, there are a lot of people remarking on both of your beauty. I won't read all of those out loud, but, no, no. um... That's what we're here for. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's a lot of countries checking in. We have Peru, we have France. Come on. Um, <laughs> there's so um, Christine Miller is asking, Snyder is asking if any, either of you have had anything supernatural happen in your private lives that you care to share. I used to suffer really badly from sleep paralysis, oh. like from when I was about five till my mid forties, which is a terrifying thing if you've ever had it, yeah. and is the kind of closest thing to a demonic experience that um, I've ever come across. And you know, at its worst, I was having like three bouts of it a week, sort of in my twenties. So that was pretty terrifying. And I don't know if it's supernatural or not, but it certainly feels like it is when you're having one of the attacks. Definitely, I've definitely had that, and it is. It's horrifying. the most terrifying thing, things yes. coming in and sitting by the bed and breathing and climbing on the bed yes. and you can't move a muscle yeah. or literally like a finger. But sometimes there is a, there is a physical explanation to that, it has to do with the synapses of, the, of your brain cells because yeah. some of them are activated and some yeah. of them are asleep so... And there's a part in your brain that is receptive to fear, you know, the exactly. thing makes you go like yeah. that and when you can't move that gets completely like cranked up. Plus the adrenaline yeah. and plus the, the, the fact that your body can move. So yeah. you, so you so are hallucinating, but what is interesting is everyone has the same hallucinations. The men in the hats and mm -hmm. the things crawling on the bed, the things mm -hmm. crouching by your ear, um, which is fascinating. But, it's the same, but maybe it's a part of the brain that, <laughs> I don't know, is filled with hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, now I just feel terrible that you had this for so long and you... Yeah, oh, no, it's a because, long thing. Um, uh, Kendra is saying, te amo Pancho. Oh, um, yo también. <laughs> Besos. <laughs> um, so we know Mouse is coming in pretty soon. I believe episode three is when Zulika Robinson's character starts. Um, she's mainly contained to the Vatican storyline at first. Correct. That's is that right. correct? Yes. Okay. Um, both Marcus and Tomas have pretty strong personalities, and I'm wondering how, um, if it comes to the point where they may have to work or not work with her, how do you think they might take on having another rogue exorcist around? Actually, we're not really clear about that yet, because we are right now shooting episode 7. Okay. We had a little glimpse of episode 8, so we're not clear about that situation. I think at, at a certain point, uh, the stories are going to collide and that is also something that's going to happen mm -hmm. with our story and Andy Kim's story but yeah I think that that should happen and uh, yeah, there is nice. a very interesting no no <laughs> oh. nice oh, oh, no. nice nice no not I knew nice. what was going to come out nice. of your mouth nice nice thank you thank you thank you ah uh, Ben please carry on <laughs> We don't know. Carry on. So. No, yeah, exactly. exactly. Carry on. Um, talk to me about some birds falling out of the sky uh, in this coming episode. <laughs> um, well, yeah, it's part of the nature horror of kind of like being out there in the Northwest Pacific. Yeah. You know, the, the, they're, they're really using all elements of woods and birds and fish. There's a fish. Isn't yeah. There? The well, also. It's like yeah, very well, clear. Yeah. You can see like very clear references of. of of um, horror um, movies. Um, so like the birds, yeah. the ring with the whale, yeah. and they're sort of drawing in on that, which is a kind of collective horror subconscious. There'll be men in hats next. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> they all know I was one of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, so 
I have to admit that um, I love horror, but I'm not like a, a horror aficionado. And so I did not know that there were so many subgenres of yeah. all of the, you know, all these references that they're making. Did you guys, how much of a horror education did you have before you came into the series? None. Really? None. Uh, he, he, he had to educate me a little <laughs> And my wife. But, uh, but yeah, the, I now understand why horror is such a big thing. And it's, it's very interesting. It's very interesting why human beings we like to be scared and just the the fact of sitting down and experimenting and exploring and getting inside ourselves just to to feel that it's in a certain way I, I, I associate that with for example spicy food it's something that you love <laughs> horror slash spicy food <laughs> something, <laughs> it's something that you love but at the same time it's it's painful it, it mm -hmm. hurts and uh, mm -hmm. that's a serious spice you're on there. I, I'm from Mexico. I'm from Mexico. My <laughs> um, I love horrors and have been obsessed with it since I was I, I was eight when I saw the birds, Alfred Hitchcock's the birds, which is interesting that it's touched on in this new episode. Yeah. But um, I, I love it. It's my go-to. I am um, yeah. I'm sort of obsessed with it really. Mm -hmm. And. Um, that's why it's so great that our show has been embraced by the horror community because we're a snooty lot. You know, if, it's, <laughs> if it's like slightly subpar, we just yeah, don't, no. we attack it. Yeah. The guillotine. Um, yeah, and so it's great that you know they feel the same way that we feel about it, and the fan response has been absolutely extraordinary. That's amazing. Um, I'm, I've been impressed with how many of your guest stars, and uh, because so often for the exorcisms, you know, the demon is trying to turn the person basically inside out or break their back, so you have a lot of guest stars that can do back, these crazy back bends, right? Can either of you do, do a full wheel in yoga, or can you do these, these back bends? I won't ask you to, to uh, prove it right now. Yeah, are you can. Uh, yeah, I might be able to do a, a, yeah, a full wheel. Yeah. Is that the kind of Bridge, back wheel, some, Yeah, Bridge, exactly, yeah. 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 I can do that on a good day. On a good day? On a bad day, I'll break. <laughs> it's good to know. It's good to know. Um, so there aren't, there haven't been a ton of questions that have come in, but there have been a lot of best show ever and a lot in both English and Spanish. So happy for your success. So you guys should just know that, that you Thank have you. this Thank following you. over. Um, last question we'll take from Cheryl um, Abreu. Abreu. Has working on this made you believe more in exorcism and evil out there? Heavy to finish up with. Um, well, it, it, exorcisms exist, you know, and that, you know, when I did a hell of a lot of research before we started, and there is something that goes across every culture and every religion, which is the manifestation of a demon mm -hmm. and the signs of possession, and then a person of religious faith will come along and recite scripture and um, cure them uh, of that. But, um, so it definitely exists, and there are there are lots of documented cases where something strange happens to human beings. But the criteria for the Catholic Church to allow an exorcism to be performed are really, really strict. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to speak and converse in a foreign language, to have knowledge that you couldn't possibly have of the priests, and, and sometimes and strength languages that are yeah extinct yeah, yeah yeah and have strength beyond your uh, physical mm -hmm. capabilities. So. You know, only then, um, once all those tests have been done, will they allow a bishop to say, yeah, okay, you can perform an exorcism. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, it's always sat in a very fictional area for me, because I've watched every, probably every <laughs> possession movie right. that's been made. But right. like now, I don't know, it's a strange thing that goes yeah. on with us humans. How about you? Well, my, I come from a very, well, I'm from Latin America, I'm from Mexico, therefore Catholicism over there is huge. And uh, in my, I, I don't practice it, uh, but my opinion is that there has to be a balance in, in, this, uh, in this space. And light exists and darkness exists and both figures need to exist so one and the other can be appreciated. So I think that that balance is needed and we are seeking or what we are trying to portray in this story is this battle between darkness and light. Mm -hmm. Both in the physical world, which we are represent we're representing and we are portraying that 
But at the same time, that same battle is taking place on another level that is sometimes visible in the show, but at the same time is uh, invisible to, to the viewers and to the human eye. And I do, I do think that uh, both forces exist and that duality is, is needed for us to, to, to live. And both Father Marcus and Tomas uh, were in the story to just generate that balance. Yeah, that's a great place to stop. Thank you guys so much for coming by. Thank, Thank you. you. Exorcist Fox on Fridays and we'll have a great time.